problem of supercoiling arises during DNA replication in E. coli. If you look at the E. coli chromosome, it's a single circular DNA molecule. And during replication, the two strands, which are twisted around each other once every 10 nucleotides, or many thousands of times, have to be separated. So you can see the problem that arises. Think about this molecule. You're going to take these two strands, start pulling them apart here and separating them. As you do that, all those twists that are presently in the DNA molecule are going to wind up as supercoils in other parts of the molecule down here. Eventually, it would be impossible to separate the two strands. So at some point, something has to be done to remove the supercoils. So if we think about what, the, what a supercoil looks like, imagine taking the DNA molecule and laying it along the board here, taking hold of it with your right hand and giving it a half twist. You would wind up with something that looks like this. This is a half twist with the right hand. In other words, a positive one-half twist. This is the direction of supercoiling that results because the, the twisting of the DNA helix is positive twisting. So this, as you pull those out, it generates positive supercoils elsewhere. The enzyme that takes care of this is called gyrase. Gyrase binds to a place like this. Gyrase is an example of the class of molecules known as topoisomerases. In particular, gyrase is a topoisomerase 2 enzyme. Now, the way that it acts then, it binds at a place like this, and it's going to hydrolyze phosphodiester bonds in the front part of the molecule in this twist. It looks something like this. So gyrase has hydrolyzed the phosphodiester bonds in both strands of the front part of the molecule, and now you can see the back part of the molecule through that gap. The next thing that it does is it goes through a conformational change. It's going to push the back part of the molecule forward through this gap. It uses ATP in the process to do this conformational change. After that's happened, it's then going to re-ligate the DNA strands that were cut but now those two, those two strands, this part of the molecule, is going to be in the back where it was originally in the front, this. Now what we've got, this is the sort of a twist you would see if you had the DNA molecule lying against the board, grab hold of it with your left hand and gave it a half twist. This is a half negative twist. The net change then, from positive one half to a negative one half twist, is a net change of negative one. In other words, gyrase has now taken out one complete 360 degree rotation, or one, net, one positive supercoil, by introducing one negative supercoil. Gyrase acts then out, of, out on the DNA molecule in advance of the replication fork and it's going to wind up taking out all of those twists as they're introduced by separating the DNA strands. Eventually then, at the end, the two strands with their new complementary strands on them will be able to separate fully. You have two daughter molecules and they can separate when the cell divides. <laughs>